Welcome to SelfDiscoveryRadio.com, where the orchard of wisdom is just ready for picking. We celebrate your why, the journey that you've taken that inspires someone else. We support your services. We support your story. Come and be our guest. Become a host. Be an author with us. Come and see what we've got. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Eco Solutions. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is Alison Goodwin. She's been with us here before, but we're on a totally new chapter. We're going to be bringing you a series of the movers and the shakers and the earth Quakers that are out there changing our climate, changing our emotional climate, changing our physical climate, changing the climate of policy and the climate of bringing us all together because it is time that it got changed. Now, for me, it's early morning. For her, it's early evening. What's your excuse with the curlers, darling? (laughs) (laughs) My excuse is we're going to let our hair down a little. We're going to let our guard down a little. We're going to get a little bit more relaxed in the uptight, tense world, and maybe we can have a connected moment of human in our crazed humanity. Yes. Wouldn't that be nice? It would be very nice. And, you know, we've, we kind of seem to separate ourselves, don't we, from the human and the being. And, you know, we have to step into our beingness to understand our humanness. And it's not just what we're doing. It's who we are being while we're doing it. And this is something that we need to understand. We're not here just ramping the whole thing about climate change. We're talking about the consciousness, uh, the climate consciousness for mankind. It has to change on every level, not just for our planet, but for our hearts, our souls, our spirits, because if we don't change this, we are going to be in trouble. Now, folks, I have got a hang up on, on the name of this because I'm dyslectic and for some reason I want to reverse the name but she started this beautiful 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 umbrella of collecting people like Al Gore and um, Lazarus from the Buddha Fest uh, um, organization and many many others many people here that I've interviewed here in Eco Solutions under this one umbrella to produce a global selfie and that's what we're going to be talking about today when you get collective minds and spirits and people each bringing their own piece of Uh, puzzle to the picture you really get a clearer picture on what is a going on what we can do about it how we can empower us how we can join in so my darling as i cannot do the name justice please the justice name title is okay it's called synchronistory making history in synchronicity wonderful synchronistory and the word at the end is story synchronous story and it's really important now to understand that we've been living an old tired stale Mm. storyline we need to re boost this storyline with what is really going on what we're really about because it's a very fragmented um storyline that we've been fed over epochs and epochs to the point that we now believe this storyline and it's limited us. And I think we're seeing an incredible frustration, almost like, um, you know, birth contractions when you have a child. Well, I consider this birth on earth, birth contractions. And we are feeling the acceleration and the intensity of these contractions because there is a bigger, deeper, more extraordinary self that desperately wants to be born. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, this event, this is what I call a televisionary event. I've been working on synchronistory, we'll call it sync, <laughs> for, for the benefit of certain, and I understand that. No, it's just my, it's my problem, folks, and I get tongue-tied <laughs> on certain words. I'll, I'll correct my name as well, it's Goldwyn, Goldwyn. but that's okay. What did Goldwyn. I say? <laughs> I said Goodwin, and that's oh, yes. good. <laughs> I can anything, though, know, because in fact, I don't want to be labeled by a name any more than Exactly. Anything. Exactly. So it's yes. great that you mispronounced me because now that frees us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's all about good wins. 
Then <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change my name. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I've been working actually on synchronicity for the better part of 31 and a half years. Yeah. Little did I understand when I first began sitting on the floor of a New York City living room with a map of the world, with my cat and my dog running amok all over the living room floor and the map. The dog wound up pooing on it, the cat <laughs> wound up peeing on it. But I was not mesmerized by the poo and the pee. I was mesmerized by the we, yeah. by this thing called we. And all these things, that these shapes and figures that are representative of continents, and all these smaller figures that are representative of countries and cities and all the people, these living beings that are in these forms that were on that map. And what the heck we are all doing here yes. on this <laughs> tiny spit of land hurtling through infinity. Mm -hmm. This captivated me. Yeah. And I thought, my God, what would it be like if we all literally connected for one global moment in time and had this kind of a phenomenon experience that we've never had before, except I would say on two occasions, uh, maybe one or two occasions that were not predicated on catastrophe. Mm -hmm. uh, that would probably be the first moonwalk. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that there was some, um, well, I'll, I'll stay with the moonwalk for now. But by and large, everything that galvanizes and coalesces and brings us together pretty, pretty much is predicated on catastrophe. Right. And this just confounds me because we have such vast reserves of power and creativity that I'm thinking, did it never dawn on us to use those in, in a really constructive and wholly innovative way. Mm -hmm. I mean, really radically different in a way that actually awes us by the very doing and in so doing sheds light on another facet of our global selfie. I'm tired, as I know you and oh, so yeah. many of us are, of seeing this same sort of I don't want to call it the ugly side of our global selfie, but it's, it's a repeat of the same side. Yeah. In stuck in a part. groove. Stuck in a pattern. We're stuck in a groove. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And this, this is the, the important thing. When you, when you talked about laying the map down, then you realize it's, it's, this, we're all part of the world. We're just a different shape and size. And in each one of those shape and size is, you know, a different culture. Well, how about looking upon it as the... Uh, the table of the feast of the world and each country is a different dish and you know by sampling each of those dishes and inquiring and and and, in, and investigating and exploring you know the dishes that they have and then really kind of coming to understand that their dishes may be different but very often the ingredients are all the same and the common denominator between us all we're so hung up on differences we're so hung up on labels, we're so hung up on tradition. Well, it's been that way forever. Why change it now? Because it's not working. It's <laughs> not working. The needle is stuck in the groove. I want to hear the song. I don't want to hear the, you know, let's move it on. Let's move it on. And by coming together, by that beautiful thing of, of reaching out, which the internet does, allows us to reach out around the world, have conversations with other people, talk about their problems, talk about their joys, talk about their culture, and celebrate them, but also coming together to find solutions. Find solutions for the global problem for humanity, for all living things. Then we're truly devouring the feast that we can have. But at the present moment, we're all McDonalding. You know, and it's, it's just not good for us, you know, and there's so much fruit and, and goodies out there. And we've really got to get out of our own little parameter and broaden our spectrum and understand it's a we. It is an I am. It's what am I doing? It's so right. important that you become uh, enriched and abundant within yourself so you can join the we are and be productive and be solutionary and be collective. But we have got to get out of the ego, though, or the fear, 
You know, I have so many things to say. You're, I absolutely agree with you. It is interesting that recently Anthony Bourdain passed away. Mm -hmm. Anthony Bourdain was an incredibly popular um, uh, television host on CNN. He had a mm -hmm. weekly series uh, called, I think it was Parts Unknown. I had never seen it until I found out about his death. And uh, there was an incredibly a beloved following because yeah. this man went around the world eating the foods of the yes. world, but yes. more than that, dipping into the cultural yes. richness of the people that created these foods mm -hmm. from, from every walk of life, from right. every social strata. From every and table. Yeah. Every table. And every mm. table was welcome. Right. Every Right. Was mm -hmm. And he showed us the beauty of what you're talking about, mm -hmm. of the individual yes. as part of the whole. This is a critical message, Sarah, that mm -hmm. I want to reinforce because this is really fundamental to this television event, Synchronistory. Um, it is the idea that look, Synchronistory is a party for humanity where yes. the guest list is everybody. Mm -hmm. and we're celebrating community and individuality, unity and diversity, because we may all be one, but we are also very different. And yes. what's the problem? Flower, a gazillion varieties. Yes. Human, 7.1 billion. But I think that the problem is that we've been straightjacketed oh. in a one sentence yes. <laughs> that's become a life sentence of either or, and yeah. we're so much more. Mm -hmm. So it is really intrinsic to not just um, this television event, this party for humanity, but to our well-being, that we understand we don't have to make a choice anymore. You can be part of the global whole because you you are. Oh. Whether you <laughs> There's no avoiding not, it. Yeah. Yeah. But within that umbrella, mm -hmm. your uniqueness is valuable and necessary and worthwhile. And there's a great hunger, a great need for people to be seen and heard. This has been going on forever, but it's amplified now because of the tech connect that's mm. spawned disconnect yeah. yes. and the desperation that yes, yes. so Two sides to every story right you know the disconnect connect um, and and yes. you know yes. i think when we talked about the i am and you know the journey for us human beings is discover what is our purpose what are we here for what am i here for what's life all about it's for you to step into your purpose your calling i call it your musical instrument once you discover what your instrument is and then you perfect it, you can then join the orchestra, the we are, and create a symphony that then will resonate out to the world, inviting them to pick up their own instrument. We are responsible for our instrument. Only when we're re we have perfected that instrument, we're playing that instrument with the passion and the love and the conviction, can we come to the table and say, I'm ready for the orchestra now. What are we going to play? How are we going to build everybody up with a beautiful crescendo and bring them together in that one global selfie, in that one global moment, in that epiphany of uh, spiritual awakening, which is what it will be, of that connectiveness. But we have to step into our I am, which means that we can't keep pointing fingers at government and, and everyone else and corporations. We've got to go to, what's my part in it? Yes. What's my part? It? Where's my voice? Why am I not speaking out? Why am I not doing something? Why am I not changing my habits? Why am I not holding government accountable? Why am I not um, innovating myself? Where, what is our part in it? What is it? See, that is, look, th this is sort of an umbrella series that we're yes. doing. And yes. uh, I really want to acknowledge the wonderful people that are oh, going to wow. be yes. part <laughs> of this this ongoing discussion with this banner of climate change and changing the emotional climate. climate. Yes. And this is, for me, climate change is important, as imperative as that missive is. Yes. For me, the root of virtually or most all of our global ills stems from the emotional climate and the value that each individual 
has or has not been raised with. I, I often tell people when I'm talking about sync, you know, we're born, at least I believe we're born without a conscious choice or a user manual. And then we are hurled into this experience of life, hope, hoping that we have uh, really caring parental yes. figures or a mentor along the, the path. But most of us or many of us do not. Right. So we've got the majority of the world population that is in a stranglehold and a desperate one where the value of self has not been instilled. And I think that it's going to be up to perhaps those of us that are in the minority to be a mirror, not in a big brother sense. Right. I, I think yeah. there's an arrogance that somehow is taken hold of what that notion is, but in a very loving and accommodating mirror sense. Mm -hmm. So that we, in the day-to-day -day moments of our life, if we cannot somehow reflect something positive to another, that we practice reflecting something positive to ourselves. As private a moment as that is, it is imperative because, or, or to an animal or to a, yes. a plant or yes. something, even to the food that you're eating, but to train the self to find something to appreciate and to feel um, seen and validated, I suppose, and, and um, resonant. You know, resonant. That's you, know you want to resonate your good vibrations. Right, you want to resonate your harmony, you want to resonate. Your, I want world peace, it starts with you. Find the peace within you, you will resonate it out. Find the purpose within you, you will resonate it out. Find the meaning of life, you will resonate it out. The thing is, you've got to find it in you first because you have got to be it to do it. And a lot of people are doing it to be it, but no, you've got to be it to do it. Okay, here's the question then, because it's a kind of a riddle. There are people that will say, well, how can you find it first within yourself um, if you haven't tasted a little, isn't it, a, in other words, isn't it an exchange that you draw on some of that from the outside and from the inside and you yep. alchemically, but there are so many people who are living in war-torn regions yeah. or as we say, climate um, desperate climate um, regions that are that are in drought conditions yes. or uh, extreme heat or poverty and God knows what. So where does each individual somehow find that that moment of inspiration, uh, of that glimmer of hope? This is a huge issue, and I, I have to say that as important as I think the information gathering and dispersing about climate change is, there's a missing, there perhaps is a missing voice. Mm -hmm. The fact is, how, why, why should planet person care about the earth if they don't care about their self? Well, that is why the key. No, that you've just hit on the key. People who abuse the planet or take it for granted or nonchalant thinking it will always be there to serve them are the people that are killing it. Unknowingly, some people just have no, you know, understanding of the consequences of what's going on. Look at all the plastic in the ocean, how it's killing our fish. Uh, you know, look at the debris. I mean, we are such a wasteful society as human beings. Uh, we're wasteful on the food that we buy and we throw away. We're wasteful on every, we're consumers. And that consumption is to fill something within us that's empty. So we keep thinking we can buy it or it doesn't fit. Or it doesn't taste good. So I'm going to throw it out and we don't care where we throw it out, where it lands up. You know, now it becomes part of earth's problem. Our problem becomes part of earth's problem and earth saying, I can't take this anymore. I'm not taking this anymore. I'm rebelling. And so we've got to clean up our act and we've got to stop chasing the rabbit. We've got to stop chasing the, the dream. We've got to stop chasing the image of what success is. And success is stepping into yourself, being that beautiful divine human being in a purpose that serves humanity. Now you've got your success. Yes, but this is a real challenge because yes. 
when you think of the global family, really, I think of, of this world like a dysfunctional global family. <laughs> Yes. Orphan relations <laughs> without a real parent figure to yeah. guide them. And so they resort to all kinds of sibling rivalry. Right. And I understand this dynamic. But how do you get, um, now I've lost my train of thought. What you were just saying. The common people, denominator. How do you bring people together? Yeah, well, also, uh, before the common denominator, um, Oh, let the thought come back. <laughs> it will come back as we discuss. Is that you were talking about war-torn places and people in, in trauma living in the fear yes. of their lives from one second to the other. Do you remember the movie, It's a Beautiful Life? Yes. And, you know, uh, one guy in a prison camp who do, took it upon himself to bring about cheer and love and laughter to everyone. Even though they were knowing they were going to their death, it was about the life we're in right this moment. And that I think is the key, the life you're in at this moment. You're carrying a burden with you. You're fearful of the next moment, you know, what's happening in the next moment. But what you do in this moment, this very moment and how you look at life is what counts because it is only the moment this now that we actually have. And when we see people that thrive and survive out of those yes. uh, horrible situations, they lead others through inspiration inspiration yeah. becomes invitation and they show people how by living in the now the love of the now how you change the next moment you're changing the entire vibration and atmosphere of the next moment you may still not be in control of what's happening to you but you do have control of how you respond to it critical that is yes that is the critical component and i think that synchronicity i i did remember the point that I wanted to make, but I wanted to highlight the fact that synchronicity uh, is, I feel, originally it was born as a, as a party for humanity to connect mm -hmm. everybody, but there's a much stronger vibe running through the underpinnings, and that is the necessity for the many of us that yes. have not had a bene benevolent other to support us, to see us, to have an event, a global live globally um, simulcast event that will be this kind of, or hopefully will be this kind of reflection, loving, um, very powerful reflection of this parent figure that yeah. most all of us desperately need. Even if we've been raised in a loving family, society puts such a pressure to the contrary that we're constantly fighting this Gra I don't know if it's a gravity or the, the current, the ups, mm. upstream current, but we're fighting it yeah. constantly. And I wanted to point out that uh, it is, there is something terribly important about um, the, de the de underdeveloped world, the developing world, uh, getting this message. But at the same time, we have to be so understanding of the fact that little brother, baby brother, saw the developed world have their cake and eat it too, have yeah. their story on their cake, have all these mm. things, and they are now being told that they cannot. They're being told that they should not, and that it's, and that on top of that, they're being told that while one of their biggest brothers of all in the U.S. Mm -hmm. is not necessarily abiding by this in terms of the um, the legislative uh, yes. image. Okay, there are many individuals and organizations that are that, uh, that are, are that are bucking that idea and continuing yeah. on as is, but yeah. not supported by the government of their country. Right. Yes. So it is really critical yeah. to help this mass, uh, um, the majority of the world, find. Um, Find something else that will be the, the new bling. I will call it the new bling, mm -hmm. okay? And I don't know what that is. But I do. I do. It's kind of just transition, I think, when Al yeah. Gore, uh, who has made incredible strides and talks with such a genuine passion about what he's been doing for the last 40 years mm -hmm. and what, what drives him. Uh, he talks about just transition, and I think this is perhaps the tipping point. Why will 
people who are married to their old ways out of security, out of fear, out of desperation, why will they be motivated to change? Just because we're instructing them and pointing our finger? Well, no. yes, the, the fire is burning, the house is no. on fire, but we've got to find a, a very the common well denominator. So what is that common denominator? <laughs> it's Mama Earth. Mama Earth. The Earth right. sustains us all. We have a common thread here. It's Mama Earth. And it doesn't matter where you are. America, opulent country, fires burning like crazy, right? Enormous right. amount of climate change there. Europe, very rich in some areas, very poor and war torn in others. Mama Earth is stepping up and saying, I'm tired of this behavior, children. And I'm going to kick and scream and change things until I wake you up. We know as human beings, until there's a crisis, until there is something that brings us together, uh, you know, like um, a catastrophic event, we're not going to get our act together. So Mama Earth is saying right now, I am going to give you something to put your act together. And, and right now it's that global warming. I'm going to put that thread on there. We've only got so many years to change our ways. Otherwise, it's going to be a point of no return. Mama Earth is our parent. Mama Earth can give us everything we need, all our sustainability, all our emotional needs, uh, everything we need, Mama Earth has got it for us and every single thing that grows here on this planet. And we've got to remember, we grow here on this planet, we're cosmic beings and our partnership with our human being and this connection from planet is, that is the synergy. Right? Yeah. And we have got to work together. And if we don't step up and start appreciating Mama, you know, she's retaliating right now and she's going to stop feeding us soon if we don't put our act together. Yes. So it's Mama Earth is our common denominator. And it's if we don't take care of her, it doesn't matter what your issue is and what you think is important. Without Mama Earth, what have you got? This is incredibly obvious and yet people there are so many people that have not yet made the link to the fact that the the tree over there is not just a noun it's intrinsically linked yes so i feel that we have to taste the change mm -hmm. feel the change the idea of experiencing uh these these very driving principles that have been oftentimes in the realm of conceptual mm -hmm. less than the actual it is uh, critical, I think, also in the turning, turning of the ship. Uh, there are a lot of people that still believe that climate change is a hoax. I know. <laughs> uh, okay. But you know what, Sarah? I'm not even... I, it's okay. If they, yes. if they don't believe that, I, I will say, okay, then let's look at it from this uh, facet of the, of the prism. Let's say that it's a hoax but that all the changes or many of the changes that are being proposed are, are to benefit the global body the way you would reboot your human yes. body. Yes. If you're feeling a little off kilter, uh, something's not right, either you go to your doctor or you get involved in a fitness program or if you're living in a tribe, maybe you go to the tribal mm -hmm. doctor, the medicine man, but you, you tweak it or you try to do something right. to inform yourself about what's wrong and how to improve it. Why is the human mm -hmm. in the body any different than the collective global, exactly. the earthly? Yeah. Somehow those two points have to connect. The wires have to, the grids, the neurons have to make that connection in a real tangible way. And I think, I think a lot of it is though, when it's when you can blame a government or blame somebody else, you know the oil corporations, the government, they're this, they're that, you know, um, stand up in arms, it's their fault, and riot and everything else. You're not taking accountability, and there is something that you cannot avoid in life. As much as you want to run away from it, you are responsible for your choices and your actions, and your inaction is just as guilty as whatever action that you take. So you have to actually understand. You are responsible for you, the choices you make for you, your quality of life, how you live it, what you stand for, what your meaning for purposes, what your contribution is, is up to you. Now, there are people along the way that will guide you, that will give you the right tools, that will set you on the right path, but you've got to walk it. And we're still very much 
in that, that nation thinking that has been there for centuries where everybody dictated our path. Everybody told us from the moment we grew up, nope, you can't do that. You've got to do it this way. You've got to be in the box. You've got to think this way. The 2.2 kids, the picket fence, the go to church on Sundays, the get the gold watch, conform, conform, conform. Now we're saying to people, take that conformity and throw it out. But we're saying to them, step into your beautiful spirit, your beautiful energy, but understand that energy has structure. I was thinking about this line last night, not sleeping as usual, is that when you take, take a, a tunnel that they're, they're demonstrating with and you put wind in there and you watch, just let it go, uh, what happens? You know, it, it swirls around and that creates energy, right? And then you can apply it to a machine and there you have is energy. We are that energy we need that kind of energy so we need to understand what are the parameters of our energy how do we what is because if we give too much away or we try and reach out too far we're spending too much of that energy what are our parameters how do we keep it within ourselves that we can generate our own wind our own energy so yes. that we have got that energy now to share with other people or to yes. converse with other people with like energy where we are begetting energy with each other and become our own turbines right yes. instead instead of looking for somewhere to plug it in somebody else's energy we have got to be self generating and that means not energy. yes sustainable you energy within us so that we find collectively those other energies that find sustainability to, to save the human self. But the spiritual self has to be sustained to sustain the physical self. Yes, this is, uh, this is true. This is, I feel that renewable energy starts with the... Energy. Yes, yes. Renewable energy starts yeah. with you, mm -hmm. with me. And there is a huge transition generation that you just described. This is really also very well very well said, Sarah, that, um, that there are centuries upon centuries of compounded yeah. um, yeah. dictates Regul about regulation. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so there is an understandable fear yeah. for a great many in, in this transition generation because when you haven't developed this musculature uh, or it's only minimally developed, uh, it feels like being thrown into the deep end of the ocean, I, I think, for a number of people. Yes. Now, the whole new generations that have come up that understand this uh, in a profound sense. Are swimming uh, away. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're, out, they're in that water without any fear. <laughs> That's right. And it's, it's really critical that they, in their exuberance and their mm -hmm. exhilaration and their, their understanding of this, don't bypass mm -hmm. the fact that there is a sensitivity that needs to be yes. addressed to this transition generation. It is, and that is not just because it's a transition generation, that is a kind of loving benevolence that I think is intrinsic to, should be intrinsic to the human uh, spirit, right. to the, the human spirit that we've lost so much of right now. I, I have to say, and I'm not going to mention names, but there is a certain POTUS in office. Really? <laughs> <laughs> what would you be talking it? about? <laughs> <laughs> there, there is so much stress mm. and tumult and questioning and desperation about what is going on. And I think you and I have talked a, a little bit before about this. I really do believe that this is another in a series of profound yes. historic wake-up calls <laughs> whether humanity wants to respond to it or not that's going to be up to each and every one of us but the opportunity given by this POTUS by default is a chance to look at who we are from angles and perspectives and depths that we have never really been called upon. And why is that? Part of that is because we're living in an unprecedented time where technology has now put us all on the same page the at the spot. same moment. Yes. So yes. no matter what other crazed uh, energetics were operative throughout history, this dynamic alone pivots us on a 
totally different uh, course. And I it, look, yes, please. No, no I, I look at everything that he is and yes. everything that they stand for, the yes. arcadeness of it um, is, I call them the ivory towers. They're up in the ivory tower, completely delusional of what's going on on the ground. As long as their ivory tower is protected and everybody keeps serving them, but they don't realize that the foundation is crumbling. And in that denial of the foundation crumbling, in that denial that they think people will just keep on serving, keep on serving, uh, they think that they're fine as long as they're looking after them. Well, their foundation is crumbling because people are looking at it for what it is. It is not part of the collective. It's not part of the we. They are so in the narcissistic I am, not in the I am enriched. It is I am going to suck the energy out of anybody and everybody around me without any accountability whatsoever. So it's an invitation for people to look at this. You know what? I don't like this. I don't like the power he's taken away from me. I want to step into my empowerment. I want my voice there. I don't care if we're black, white, pink, yellow, what religion, what culture, what sex, what this, what that. As a human race, it's an invitation for us to come together, not up in arms, but locked in arms and say, we're not going to take this anymore. We're not going to stand for this. You are not representing us as a human nation, as a human global community and we're not going to stand for this and we're seeing this the i am movement the various other movements we're seeing people denounce him we're seeing people stand up and say this is not us this is not our country this is not what we've worked for this is not the american dream but you know we're we're also seeing it with brexit with what's going on in england and the division that's going on there the bottom line is people are saying Really, folks, the same old battle that's been fought for how many centuries, the same old opulence of keeping and suppressing the people. How long can you keep the lid on something before that lid blows? And that lid is blowing right now. And it will blow. And, and what I think people are becoming aware of is it's going to blow with or without yes. our approval. Yes. <laughs> I think. And yes. that's just the principle of physics. It's yes. just the, the actual dynamics of when an energy is building right. to such a point. It either implodes or explodes. I think it imploded, frankly, for so many generations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's yes. bound to yeah. manifest itself. But we, we have a choice of how it explodes. Because in revolutions of the past, it has been taking up the arms and fighting your brother. I disagree, I'm going to kill you. So what we're asking now is as this explosion, this lid comes off, let that collective energy be about unison. Let it be about coming together on the same message. Our planet Earth is sustaining us. What are we doing for planet Earth? What are we doing for our collective climate conscience? Yes. What are we doing for our consciousness towards one another? And it's, it's stepping into the right energy for the change. We don't need any more wars. We don't need any more deaths. We don't need any more of this. We're sick and tired of it. We want unison. That's right. And we want voices that have not been heard in the past to yes. also have, be heard. Yes. We want that middle America yeah. or, or the heartland. Yes. The heart of so many worldwide yes. lands also have their voice. Not just to be heard for a blip in time, but to be honored on the same plateau as all the voices. I realize in the symphony, as you beautifully described earlier, this wonderful metaphor, not every instrument is playing at the same uh, no. volume at the same moment. No. So it's important that the global body understand and that we make sure as best we can that each instrument of the global body will have its voice yes. and in and out. I'm so worried that um, I, I don't, I'm not from the heartland of America and I haven't spent much time there, but I'm actually worried that um, for this little blip in time, everybody will get on the, maybe the trendy bandwagon of saying, okay, we'll go and listen to you, and then it will get brushed aside. And I don't want, if I, I don't want, <laughs> I'm, I'm only speaking, I, I want to say this. When I speak emphatically today, it is not because I'm in a position of authority. No. I'm just speaking yes. my, 
True mission of passion and conviction. Yes, and I want your viewers and your listeners to understand mm. that also, because mm -hmm. that's a really critical yeah. component of this whole thing. But I, I just, uh, I, I feel that with the elections, the midterms coming up, the elections, the EU parliament, mm. the conundrum that the whole world seems to be feeling and not knowing what to do, that they understand that what you're saying. It's a new voice. It's a new yes. paradigm. It's a something that we don't even know because we've not lived it uh, in the recent past. And I mean, maybe in the last uh, uh, thousand, thousand years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But, but, so, but, but you're, you're saying for everyone to have their voice. Now, the thing is, is in the orchestra, or in the choir, you may have the solos. And those solos are the ones that kind of set the tone, that set where the music goes. And even when the choir comes collectively together, they become one voice. Right? Yes. They become this beautiful, strong voice. It's not about competitiveness. It's about collaboration. And we are stepping into a collaborative time where we need to help one another because the only way we're going to survive is by working together. And you know here under the umbrella of Eco Solutions, the amount of people I have that with this innovation or doing this or doing that, each one of them has picked their instrument. And what they're looking for right now is an orchestra to join where we can all create this kind of music that then resonates and invites others out. And this is my platform. This is your platform. We're yes. bringing them all together. In yes. this series, we're going to have policy uh, changes, the, the empowerment of government to adopt to easy policies that could be collectively around the world and synchronously happening at the or simultaneously happening at the same time so that everybody is on the same playing field and there isn't one person taking advantage of the other we've got you know the the consciousness of our heart stepping into heart Literally, somebody who's come up with um, an apparatus on an app, John uh, Williams, uh, Robert Williams, Robert. an app uh, that you can play that actually literally raises your vibration, raises your frequency uh, around your heart, to put you into a happier state. Even the water that changes your consciousness. There are so many incredible innovations out there right now that, like you, people saw something that needed to be done for you. You started off 31 years ago looking at a map. For other yeah. people, they just were willing to take the journey to see where it would take them and where it's taken them and to what they're doing now. It's not a journey they thought they were going to have, but it's one that they allowed themselves to have. But the beautiful thing, and this is the thing I'm finding across the board with people I've interviewed over the last six years, of how many people are coming back were all ready for harvest. Everybody's ready for harvest. We know that the picking is going to be happening very soon and everybody's poised, ready for that picking of the harvest in whatever they're doing. I can tell you right now, just vibrationally of what's happening, there is going to be an enormous shift that's going to topple people over to the other side. And the people in Middle Earth, as we call it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. God bless them. <laughs> they, we're not going to change their minds by talking to them. They are people that have always been followers. But when they see the changes enhance their lives, empower their lives, that give them more security, give them better health than mining down in the deep mines, they actually then go, okay, I feel secure enough to follow because some people are never meant to be leaders even in their own life. They're just followers. But what we've got to do is give them something to follow. So yes. we can't worry about them. What we have to do is empower the collective voice, that orchestra, that song that resonates, that invites them to trust us to follow. Trust. What a, yes. what a brilliant brilliant word and trust is earned and yes. my goodness when you talk about the the uh over the course of time how trust has been lost mm -hmm. and re ha, how to uh, regain that trust well perhaps there is an acceleration and trust will also somehow be regained in a in a speedier fashion sometimes you know i i sometimes i say fast change comes from the insight out like insight yes. violence yes. yes but lasting change comes from the insight out yes insight yeah. and it's a play on words but it, it has a, a very powerful significance so 
people who are followers should feel very much valued as the followers yes. that they yes. are yeah. because that is a valuable yes. position to hold in your own right and one should not feel like they have to be leading and the leaders who are leading should understand that leading as you said earlier from a place of ego will no longer no not be tolerated that's right not be tolerated if, you, if you're not that right now on, on America's Got Talent here, yeah. they have, you know, this uh, talent show and they have this choir, which is they've been on twice now. First time was 120 of them. Next time was 140 of them. And they come together in such unison. And they're so creative. The first time they did snapping the finger, snap ring for all of them, patting their legs and then boom, boom, like thunder and then going into a song. And, you know, Simon Cowell can be very, very critical. I and mean, you just see him rocking himself like this into the music. <laughs> and it's what it's doing. And they're all walks of life, all walks of life. And this woman has brought them together in a synergy, in a, in a collaboration, in a harmony that two or three of them have their little spots but it is about that collective voice and how invitational it is because of how harmonious it is so when we're talking about empowerment you're inside out you're inside out please empower you yes empower yes. you your energy your yes. love your passion your conviction that yes. is where you are going to see the change. Change you, you will automatically see changes around you. Yes, it's, it's really true. I mean, when you talk about trust and trusting to change oneself is a, sometimes a Herculean and deeply courageous mm -hmm. movement. Even one millimeter takes great uh, courage. I will call it courage because I know I, I've done this and I've been working 31 on years, 31 years of courage and strength <laughs> and conviction, even not knowing but, where you're going, but you but, kept on going. <laughs> I, yes. But I have to tell you something. There was a juncture, uh, um, after the millennium, because this was originally slated as a millennium event, right. you know, global millennium event. Okay. And, uh, it didn't happen for various reasons. And the timing really was not, um, we weren't ready. Conducive. But I recognized something when I came back to this years later after all the gestation and maturation that this event naturally goes through in its developmental process. I found that something had shifted in me mm -hmm. energetically. Yes. This is crystal clear now that the way, the dynamics, the footpath that I took in this next phase of developing synchronistry had a fluidity yeah. that was quite stunning. And I didn't understand it at first, but as I'm looking back, I see now the way I held my energy in the pre-millennial years yes. was for coming from ego, and that's okay. There is yes. a certain amount There's of- There's a certain driving point to that, yes. yes. I need a certain amount of ego to have the courage to get out yeah. there. Yeah. But, but I was coming from a different energetic. And that ego, which was the driving force back then, um, made sure that I was going to operate in a kind of fear and a kind of uh, stasis, which confounded me. Now, in these last years that I have rebooted my system into yeah. a kind of renewable energy, yes. <laughs> Synchronicity's energy is reflected yes. in kind. People are coming to me. You're the I'm core generator, darling. You're the core generator. Right? Am I the core generator? Yes. Or no, the no. you're the core generator. Uh, there has to always to be a core. So you're okay. that core generator that now is empowering all these other energies to ignite. It's to like ignite, to be switched on. I see. Right? Yes. yes. Right? It is like an invitation. And, yes. And, yes. Right? I, <laughs> This is but, it, but it's also, you couldn't, it, it's like everything I've done. I've got a whole blueprint of, of my next stage and I know it's right. It's just timing. And the timing has to be in the synchronicity of other people believing in what I'm doing and realizing it's time to do it because obviously there's backing needed and, and support needed, looking for those two or three perfect sponsors. The thing is, you have these beautiful ideas and they're not wrong. What we have to do, rather like the bamboo tree, we plant the seeds, we water and we nurture, but sometimes we see no evidence of its growth at all. 
but we keep watering interest in faith and we keep hoping that those seeds are growing and then all of a sudden a certain bamboo tree over a space of five or six weeks will grow 200 feet in the fifth year right that's mm -hmm. the thing is just because you're not seeing well where's the results where's the results it's happening what did you've done in your tom toms you've sent out this vibrational signal to other people then this is the energy that i am extending as an invitation to others who resonate with that energy and let us collectively build a, a greater force for the greater good and let come and join me and that is what you're doing and only when you've reached those certain people that click that's why I'm saying energy that begets energy. When you find those people, I hear you. I see you. I want to be a part of it. Let's do it. Now yeah. those energies are growing. You can't force anything until you've got those collective energies on board. Now, cosmically, 2012 was a huge energetic shift. The frequencies went from third dimension to fourth and fifth. We're now in our fifth dimension. Uh, there's still the fourth training. The third dimension is going by the wayside. And we're now opening up to all the other dimensions, which we know of up to 12 right now. And some people are in that higher frame. But I'm telling you that the universe is coming along and turning our volume up. It's saying, okay, you can take that energy. You can take that volume. You're comfortable with it. I'm going to turn it up a little more. I'm going to empower your energy even more to have even more transmission. Right? So your timing is right now. And that's the reason we're back here talking again because of the people I have collectively interviewed that you've collectively gathered. And now we're putting them all in this beautiful stew yeah. <laughs> and inviting everybody to come and take it. And it's a vegan stew. <laughs> a vegan stew in a vegan symphony. Exactly. <laughs> it's a vegan symphony. Yes. <laughs> if not, we'll create one. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's pure of heart. And it is, I think, till people step into heart, I think that is the key. Yeah right? The, the inside out job, the insight of who we are, what we're here for has to come from the generation of your heart. I would say the soul is yes. where, where the divine speaks to us. It resonates with our heart uh, in understanding and in passion and conviction. It goes to our spirit yes. interaction and then our mind will know what it needs to know when it needs to know it. And we will resonate that truth of our understanding. And that's, that's, the, that's the knowingness in the now. And we step into the knowingness of the now. That's what we're resonating out. Yeah, this is, I'm holding this word knowing. And I'm going to say something before I talk about knowing. When people, this is something that I've also been learning. And I want to encourage people to step into their heart or their passion, uh, their beautiful passion. Yes. Because this gives permission to others yes, to yes, do yes. kind. And when you said before that uh, because my energy changed, I drew towards mm -hmm. me, I believe that others, they were also shifting their yes. energy. And mm -hmm. so the more people that feel, whether it's because of somebody else that they saw who yeah. sort of gave permission to and yeah. have it their sense of self, or because in my case, I, I never, let me tell you, in my case, I'm jumping all over the place, but it really, it's crazy. I never used to think about nature, much less my own human nature. I saw a tree, and as I said earlier to you, a tree was a noun somewhere over there, you know? Uh, it's not that I was abusive to nature by any sense of the word, but it just was not, it didn't have personal relevance. Mm -hmm. Well, someone very, very dear to me many years ago, a very wise uh, individual, said to me out of the blue one day, Allison, I think you need to go stand by a tree. Mm -hmm. I was in the middle of a city. I said, why? Why are you telling me this? You know, and I had 10 million other things, better things to do. But don't you know, I stood under a tree in the city of wherever I was at the time, and I just tried to let myself be open to whatever. I didn't know what that whatever was. But just the fact that I had a tiny willingness for yes. a tiny moment mm -hmm. in my life somehow shifted something. And I started to become aware. And that awareness grew. And the, the growth of this awareness uh, enveloped me to such a point that I understood 
a few years later that when I believed originally that synchronicity was an event that would someday happen and that perhaps should happen, I was holding that not from a place of knowingness, but mm-hmm. more of a place of fear and great hope and, and great ego. Mm-hmm. I know what it's like to know when something is right. It doesn't even mean, Sarah, that this event will ever happen in my lifetime or ever, although I, I do have this strong sense that yes, it will. It will. But there is a knowingness that what I'm doing is absolutely the right thing. And I'm also open to the fact that at some point, maybe it won't be. I don't want to become a, a, a fanatic either. Right. To my but, own. Wait, but what you're talking about is the journey. The thing is, the importance is your journey because the people you're gathering along the way, the people that, that are shifting energies and collecting energies and co- collaborating with energies, it's not about the destination. That is just an epiphany, the, the crescendo of a piece of music. It is about the, the, the beautiful artisans that you're picking up along the way to create your orchestra and your symphony right that's the beauty of it it's the journey of the gathering Uh, look at all stories the hobbit and everything else right it is who we become on our journey of life who we meet along the way that changes our lives how we collectively can come together to create change in the empowerment of that loving energy not just for ourselves for each other for our planet and the power that energy can create that is what it's about whether the selfie movement of of global ignition all at the all at the the at the same time i do believe it will happen i think it will be like a case of dominoes you know one country do 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 going yeah. around and i do believe that will happen and i think it's going to happen a lot faster than you think but that is not the end of it That actually just even invites people even more to be a part of that collective. Yes. And then to be inspired to do even more extraordinary things. I I just, I mean, I just find the fact that we are 7.1 or whatever billion of us, plus all these life forms on this tiny ball rolling around through infinity. This concept is so phenomenal that I can't imagine us not living anymore in um, in this kind of expansive realm of possibility of thinking out of the box. Thank you, POTUS. I must say he's yes. he's certainly inspired, yes. and energetic. Of oh, yes, up yes. is down is right. Is I don't left. want his box. How do I get out? <laughs> well, you know what? Get used to not his box, but the dynamic yes. of his box, which is breaking structures, breaking molds, breaking yeah. trajectories that have been so ingrained for so long. And uh, I know, again, how hard it is for a, a strong um, a strong majority of the global population to take this ride uh, and, and to feel that they're taking it not even by their own choice. This is also very difficult. But I do know from personal experience that, as you say, when you go in and find a little seed, a tiny seed worth nurturing, there is something beyond comprehension that happens and the human being flowers. It may not be a flower that's visible or that's pungent, but you feel it. I feel it. I could never have had this conversation even a few years ago when we spoke. Well, that's what I'm saying. Everybody now is suddenly blooming and blossoming and that harvest is coming in. You know, the other thing I want people to look at is this. Yes. Right now on Facebook, they have these things are showing a rotary phone to kids and they have no idea what it is. They show a typewriter. What is it? Uh, a rotary <laughs> phone, the ones that you dial. Right. And then showing them a typewriter and and they're all trying to guess what it is. Now, you and I are both, you know, it doesn't feel that long ago, right? Um, there's, there's a thing going around Facebook right now for a little a snippet from the show Yes Minister back in the 70s. The dialogue skit that's there could be a skit that could be going on right now. What it's showing us is that in some ways we are 
repeating the same old pattern and we're in that groove and we can't get out of it. The mm -hmm. other ways is that we've accelerated so beyond in technology. We're going at such lightning speed that our human consciousness is not catching up to the same paradigm. But look at this. How long has the internet been out? What effect has it had? Good and bad. But let's say, look at the good, how it's connected the world, that even in third world countries, they may not have a roof over their head, but they've got a cell phone. The thing is, yes. these apparatuses that we have here today, yeah. this is our energy field. What we do is just plug something in, press a button, zoop, off it goes. Right? Yeah. We have the power. We have the tools. It's how we're using it. That's how right. are we using it to empower and invite? This, so to really further what you're saying, Sometimes I think that the invention of technology is to actually help us to reconnect to our humanity. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Because I think there's, right now we're also at a turning point, a pivot point, where people are saying, uh, you know, they're crashing their computers, their cell phones, they've, they've rejected it all. Mm -hmm. And others that are so married to it, they don't even know what eye contact means. In right, right, right. Um, with their eye things. See, so everything um, goes like that before it can find yes. a balance. Yeah. Yes. So if somehow we can return the ship in the direction of our humanity without abandoning the technology, right, but right. making sure that humanity is the driving yes. factor and yes. not the, the reverse, then I think we can, we can discover phenomenons beyond our wildest dreams but it is a dangerous tipping point and uh because again there's a lot of ego that is embedded in fear fear yep. being predominant energy that's driven this planet for so long yep third dimensional thinking yes flight yes. or flight mm -hmm. that's right so uh, this is i feel almost as if we're in a global identity crisis it's like world war three but it's actually world war we, or yes. I should say World War Me, because what we're yeah. seeing out there is actually a projection of what's going on in here. Right. We, we created that out there. I mean, everybody's looking at the mess out there going, well, who did it? We right. did. We, we did. did because we didn't stay, step into our I am's. We didn't take yeah. ownership of who we are and what our actions are and what our choices are. We have yeah. to understand that knowingly or unknowingly, we're the one that created all the plastic in the sea. We're the one that uh, keeps nurturing the wars out of fear. We're the one that keeps separating and dividing instead of connecting and uniting. We're the ones that are making that choice, whether through abstaining of choices or whether driven by fear or driven by ego or driven by greed. We've got to understand we created the mess but we also have the ability to be the solution. And that comes down to our choice. And the choice versus step into yourself. Where's your own empowerment? Because it's very hard for you to empower anything else until you've empowered yourself. And the empowerment isn't how much money in the bank, you know, how many that people follow you on Facebook, how important you are. Yes. It's stepping into the importance of your well-beingness so that you can be whole in your energy and your connectiveness. So this is, uh, uh, again, uh, terribly important because for the volumes of people that are on Facebook and are using that as their uh, barometer, mm -hmm. their temperature reading for how um, important they are. are <laughs> and important they are. Yeah, the status. Yes. <laughs> so we don't want to yank that away from them by no. any means, but we are letting them know that in addition to that, there is this quieter voice, this quieter dimension that is much more deeply rooted. So you can play in the world of Facebook, but don't let it play on you. Yes, yes. I, yes. And I have to say another thing because this comes up so often in the, in the discussion of community and unity. You don't have to love everybody. No, no. No, you don't even have to. Love you, them. you don't have to love them, but you also don't have to hate them. That's you can right. be neutral, yeah. right? Just wish them well, and that's it. Yes, and move on. And, to, mm. and that's why I, you know, sometimes people say, "Well, is synchronicity a peace event?" Mm -hmm. And I say, personally, personally, I don't think we're ready for peace yet. No, yet. Just got to find it here first. Yeah, right. 
And because, you know, when the, when the child is having a tantrum and is enraged, you don't suddenly tell that child to shut up and be happy and put a smile. Or you do, but you know be that peaceful. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> <Be peaceful. laughs> you cannot ask an entire global body to suddenly snap no. over from the buildup of eons and epochs of en enraged energy and fear and trauma. This is a, this is a, a civilization that's born of trauma. Post-traumatic stress. It, it, that's it is, right. It is, it's, it is so, and, and depression and anxiety is, you know, at its highest. Um, and a, a lot of that is because people are feeling so alone that there's no one to or nowhere to turn um, and that they cannot take what they, the, you know, the, the ricocheting of the atmosphere that's out there right now. It's shattering them. And, yes. and you know, I, I mess up because I'm a sensitive. I feel all those things going out there. And I know that there are days that I just feel completely crippled by the atmospheric energy that's there. And I know it's hard to work through that. And nobody can what tell you just snap out of it. Uh, for me, I have to redirect. I have to redirect to something that feeds my heart and feeds my spirit. And for me, it's music. It's, it's interviewing because I'm in my knowingness and in my now, and that always elevates me. But it also is putting on the headphones and listening to some music and letting that music, um, music yeah. isn't just something that's words and beautiful music. What it's actually doing, certain frequencies is resetting you. It's yeah. resetting your frequency in your body into a quieter alignment. And so find some people that might be jogging, might be nature, what it is. You've got to find out what it is that reconnects you because we are challenged. But, yeah. you know, when you, when you go, you know what, this is just something that's attached to me and I don't want it. I'm going to take it off. Decide that. And then, okay, it's really sucked on to me. What am I going to do to leverage it off? You can't fight it. That's right. Fighting isn't going to do it. What you have to do is love it so it feels secure enough to leave you. Yes. Oh, that's so well said. And, and if it doesn't leave, because, you know, there's another thing. There's a kind of a, of a fantasy notion. I think of it as a beautiful Woodstocky notion that it's all peace and love and everything is beautiful. No, the reality is because now it's time to get mature and, and yes. really step into an adult posture for yes. the evolution of whatever yes. this world is to become. There is a dark side. There is a dark side that lives within all of us. Yes. That is not something that uh, can be or needs to be obliterated. No. It can't be. But to learn how to integrate that so as you're saying, that voice doesn't become the dominating voice. Yes. That it lives with us and it adds dimension. It can add yes. dimension if it is not um, if, if you're just in light, you're blinded. You need the shade, the contours of light, right? You have to have that. The contours. I love that. That's an excellent word. And that's what I also hope that people understand. Much like you don't have to love and like everybody, mm. but respect the difference. Yes. That there is difference and there will always be, as far as I'm aware, and that to respect that in each other is the little germ to begin, yeah. begin the, the, the evolution. Agree to disagree. Exactly. Right. Exactly. You know, is why should I hate you? And, you know, uh, it's, it's right. also when people come at you, and this is something that's very important for people who are energy igniting of themselves, is what is your parameter? And to make sure that your energy, this is where your energy feels full and sustainable and really generates your purpose, right? Mm -hmm. If you've got people that come along that wibble wobble your energy, then you must put up the barriers that remove them from it. And, mm -hmm. and, and you have to understand that's their infliction they're dealing with. You don't need to take it on. It doesn't define who you are. It's not telling you you're doing something wrong. It's their issue. Do not let it in. Right. You know? And don't condemn them for having it. No, because it's I, part of, the, you know, they're trying to... Everyone's trying. Yes, everybody's trying. And, and they feel that by blah, 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 at you, it's yes. resolving their problem until they realize... I always say, when, yes. in my coaching days, is the best conversation you can have is that with your mirror. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to pull the wool over your own eyes. It really is. Heart to heart, looking into the eyes of the mirror.
Yes. And I get, really? You want to pull that one over on me? (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. I think that by also by relieving, like you're saying, relieving the burden, the pressure to have to, that I should this or I I must. Yes. Yeah. That's right. But in a, in a caring way towards self and toward other as much as possible, relieves this burden of, of, um, of the should, which relieves then the, the frustration that would build up from yeah. walking through a false, yes, and the, the inauthentic self. Yes. Now, there is something, a very fine line that I, I, I know we, we should point out. To be an authentic person, if you authentically feel like killing someone, that does not no, mean... That's, that, that, that is not a validation. No. Not, but to at least privately in a very serious deep space somewhere within your soul to acknowledge that you are having a very whatever feeling of the moment and not push that away because in pushing that away you are going to build that somewhere in the ether a tiny seed eventually grows it just means to acknowledge where we're all at at any given moment and behave respectfully. Right. But if we can start with that, I don't even I didn't even venture to think what kind of a world this could be. And I will say one other thing. I synchronistry has become uh, affiliated uh, as you know with John Bunzel and Nick Duffel. John yes. Bunzel's spearheads. Two great guys. Simple. They're coming up next for <laughs> Simultaneous policy. And to me, this is a stunning demonstration yeah. of what global governance in its power. And let's talk about the word power mm-hmm. because there's power and then there's power. Yeah. This is what it means to be democracies worldwide harnessing a kind of noble power that I don't think we've ever really experienced before. Right. And, and, and the thing about power yes. is who does it empower? Yes. Yes. Right? And the thing is, when you've yeah. got something that empowers, like I'm, you know, I've interviewed both Nick and, and, uh, and John, and they're going to be coming up synchronously after the, <laughs> each week, new show coming. <laughs> and, you know, it's, uh, and they're coming at it from different perspectives, which is wonderful. So, you yes. know, when we actually kind of st- look at all sides, of the, you know, of the coin, so to speak, then we have a better understanding. But the simpleness of it, of taking some basic policies, the common denominator, that is the basic policy in every parliament around the world. And, and everybody's synchronizing that ignition of that policy and putting everybody on an even playing field. But what's even better is the fact that he's given the empowerment to the people to say to the politicians, I won't vote you in unless you're accepting this policy, unless you are going to fight for that unity of global humanity and everyone on the same playing field. And now that's, we've suddenly given people the empowerment and the tools to get the right people in office because we know it's the same old, same old sewage pit that it has been for so long. If you get people with a different empower, now you've given those politicians the empowered tool for them to use across the aisles, because it's no longer a partisan thing, it's bipartisan, it's yes. part, across the countries, and you've got a dialogue going on that's on an even playing field. It's absolutely what brilliant. Really? Yes. What? It is brilliant. It's yes. a relief for the politicians as well. Yes. Because I think at a certain point they really... They just don't, don't know. They just know you go blah, 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 and everybody's, you know, yelling at each other and nobody's listening to each other. Well, now if you've got, you know what, we're going to use this mouse. <laughs> this yeah. is the mouse that we're going to use across the board. All yes. right. And this mouse yes. is our common denominator. That's right? right. And games can continue. The competition can continue. It will continue. Yes. Competition can be healthy. Yes. It yes. Can, it can inspire creativity yes. and innovation, but it, it's probably- it cannot be at the expense of. Exactly. That's, that's the thing. That's where the line is drawn. It cannot be at the expense of. In, enhance and invite and in challenge, yes. but not at the expense of. 
Exactly. Um, but you know, we've also I've also interviewed, which we're also going to be putting under the series. You know, is Renee, uh, who did yes. Normal is Over, and of course she's talking a great oh. deal about what Nick and John are talking about, and she interviewed people from around the world. Extremely powerful. And then we have Polly Higgins. Uh, with the wonderful ecocide law that will actually make any harmful practices to the earth or earthlings as a criminal crime that no matter who you are a president a ceo it's a criminal act and that is gathering momentum now put everybody together there as i said in, in one dish Right? right. Oh, suddenly you've got a meal that's really fortifying, right? <laughs> very satisfying. <laughs> and, and, and if you're, yes, yes. Even if you're not a vegan, okay. Yes. <laughs> kind of meal, there's a lot of meat on that yeah. bone. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've been dealing with just meat and potatoes for a long time, folks, and we've forgotten that our veggies are good for us. <laughs> that's right. <They're> good for us. <laughs> to put the human back in in politics, in, yes. in, in a sense, is. Uh, also an extraordinary concept. Yeah. I have to say, again, with regard to um, uh, Al Gore and the Climate Reality Project, mm -hmm. they are a, a tremendous uh, growing network of people around the world who really are um, inspired by this extraordinary energy that Al and Ken Berlin uh, brought to the equation so many years ago. And you've got people from all walks of life and all, all generations yeah. activated and I think that um, I, I often say now that there is a new algorithm in yeah. town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is climate change plus changing the emotional climate equals environmentally friendly atmosphere. Yes. And, and the thing about climate change, and change, until you change the emotional climate, you cannot change the climate uh, itself. Because... Mm -hmm again we're the problem but we're the solution and when we decide to become part of the solution collectively what yes. is our part in it what is my role in the waste in the um in the practices what is my role in the empowerment of the politicians what is my uh, um, role um against organizations no pitchforks again saying we're not going to accept that what is my role because you know what folks unless you are from Mars you are a resident here on this planet and you are part of the human race whoever you think you are or however how powered or this or that you think you are you are merely a human being on this planet renting space and earth is kicking you out if you do not behave yeah, our notice is being given and we've got to clean up our act and that's the bottom line of it and it's what we can do singularly but how we can do it collectively and how we can do it as a human race. And that's the invitation. All the people that I've interviewed here under Eco Solutions, all the people you're gathering, there's Lazarus of the Buddha Fest organization as Ruben well. Laszlo, yes. Yes, Laszlo. Um, yeah. I mean, his life that he's dedicated to this and what he's doing. Yes. Um, you know, the, there's so many beautiful people that, like yourself, 30 years 20 years 40 years 50 years have been dedicated to this movement but as i said the harvest is getting ready for picking and everybody knows this you know it's like the thanksgiving is coming you know and and everybody is saying look this is what i bring to the feast look this is what i bring to the feast you know what this is making a fantastic buffet let's all <laughs> dive in right and that's the whole point it's not just what you're doing it's not just what al gore is doing it's what are we doing collectively? And if we want to be part of the we, we've got to step into I am so we yeah. can be part of that we are. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo to us all. <laughs> we are awesome when we choose to be. We are innovative and creative and loving and kind and exemplary. We are absolutely incredible human beings when we choose to be. Right. But we're also the dregs of the world and the problem of the world because we chose to take that path for whatever reason. You know, we're wiser now. There's no excuse now. We've got yes. to say, you know, that's not working. This is not who I am. This is not who I want to be. This is not how I serve humanity. What yes. am I going to step into? Yeah. And I've got that to step into my mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Adolescence is over. Maybe we're yeah. entering young adult. I don't know. Or I shouldn't even categorize. I won't categorize whatever phase we're in though. I, 
I really hope. Oh, well, dimensionally, we're really, you know, vibrationally rising. The frequency is changing up. But also, when you look at the millennials, and I've got three of them, and I look at their practices, you know, their veganism, the passive housing, the, the humble roots restaurant, where it's all, you know, farm locally based foods, and, um, you know, and about bringing awareness to what's going on and around the world. It's all about they look at the way we've done it and go, but you screwed it up for us. You know, and we're going to have to change this now. Our importance is not the big house and the car and this and that. Some millennials are still following that path, but most of them they go, no, that's, I see how unhappy you are, even though you achieved that. Yeah. If that's what made you unhappy, I don't want any of that. I'm going to take a different path. And the children that come after that, my God, they're so wise. They are so wise. They're so talented. They're so intuitive. We have got to stop thinking we know it all and start listening. Our animals are teaching us. Our nature is teaching us. The children are teaching us. It's time to learn, folks. I don't care how old you are. It's time to learn. Yes. I hope that we've helped bud a little bit of that in this conversation. Scratch the surface. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. You're a great facilitator. You really Thank are you. beautiful energy you have. And I hope that that just expands exponentially. I hope. Well, I invite everyone now. Next week will be Nick. And, and of course, he brings his, you know, psychotherapy approach to this whole simple yeah, solution, the synchronistic history. policy. And then there's John that will come in actually talking about the policy and just how easy it is to adapt, adopt, pursue and, and uh, embrace. And then, you know, we have um, uh, Pashang, you know, yes. talking about, um, you know, uh, waste management that he's bringing to his country. And then we have... Uh, um, uh, Paolo, Paolo, and we're talking You're about right. the economics side of things. So yeah. we, you know, and of course, you know, Rene and, and Polly will be in there as well. And the thing is, these are people that have dedicated their lives and their journeys to this course. This is their it, right? And their it has changed along, you know, the, the blueprint has changed, but the core reason for why they wanted to do it, the core reason yeah. to enhance humanity, to get back on it into a village, where we all love care and support one another is what the driving force is. And each one of them has embraced the beautiful instrument, brought it to the, to the, uh, to the orchestra and boy, what music they're playing. It's absolutely wonderful. And if you cannot be inspired, if you cannot support the policy thing, so easy for you to do, they've made it so easy for you to do, Right, with Polly, so easy being an earth protector, so God, and easy for you to do. There yes. aren't any excuses. It's just participation, folks. Please participate. Be part of the global solution and participate. Because this is the reason why we're bringing you this series. We're showing you the people that are already doing it and made it easy for you to join. So we want to get this beautiful TV collective around the world as you call it that global selfie i'm here i'm listening i'm a part of it party for humanity right? right party for humanity that collectiveness and i see it happening and i see it happening two to three years perhaps but i see it's going to because i see the escalation of energy because energy begets energy and we're seeing such an escalation of it right now and as i said the powers that be are going to be turning up the volume because we're ready for it we're going to see hear a that, Elon from... Musk and Richard Branson. Do yes. you hear that? Oh, oh, but, but just a quick <laughs> one. The there. <laughs> they are like Tesla, like Edison. They are intuitives. They were channeled. They channeled their beautiful knowledge. They had the intellect to know how to use it. They didn't have the academics. They had the intellect of knowing how to use it and mm -hmm. have followed that beautiful challenge in creativity because they didn't get in the way. They received they understood, they applied, and they are those creators. And there's a creator in each one of us. And that creation that we're given is what we need to get out there, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. God, how inspiring it is talking with you, really. We're actually in fantastic times. If you think about it, look at the people that have stood up and embraced their passion, that are speaking out, that are creating this collective. We have for so long felt alone. What can I do? I'm only one person. Look what one person just did. As I said, I interview ordinary people doing extraordinary things. 
And we too can be extraordinary if we decide to not be ordinary. Right? <laughs> and just step into something, even if it's just a questioning of joining what's already out there and becoming a part of that collective. It's you're doing something. This is the greatest time in history because where we go from here is our choice. Let's make the right choice. And let's start with self-love because only when you're in self-love can you spend your heart and ignite other hearts and really elevate people up to a beautiful, peaceful, loving, caring humanity as we're meant to be. It starts with us, right? Indeed it does. Oh. And now, my darling, how can people get hold of you and join you and empower you and know more about you and all the interviews that you do? Well, the best thing that I would suggest at this time is to go to the website, www.synchronistory. Will you spell it out for people, please? Yes. I'm going to look, so I spell it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Don't pull a Sarah. <laughs> S like in sunshine, Y like in yesterday, N like in north, uh, C like in Charles, H like in happy, R like in Robert, O like in open, N like in north, I like in iPhone, <laughs> and the word story. So it's one word, synchronistory.com. Excellent. That's the best way to get a flavor and to contact me as well. We have the contact details on the website. And uh, I will just mention that we're not on Facebook right now for strategic reasons. And one of those strategic reasons is because I feel that there is uh, too much on, on the uh, social media highway right now. It's gotten toxic. It's bombardment. I have too much respect for the the public and the hopefully the global audience to jumpstart something that I cannot fulfill in the best way possible. And I would rather wait until we've got a little more traction right. and then the watch. Yeah. And then when you do open it up, it's, um, you know, the doors are open. And you know, the beautiful thing about Facebook is it's, it is an interactive platform. Um, it's not just about the likes. Uh, I, it has proven to me over the years has been, you know, wonderful source of meeting people and of support and of interaction and of learning. But mm. again, it comes down to choice. Um, are you going to choose those stories, that innovation and support that mm. story? Or are you there for sensationalism and for those that are, aren't going to come to your platform anyway? So, you know, when it's, when it's time, open up those mm. doors and you already have. Do you have a sign up on your site that people can already sign up and be a part of it? We have a comment section and a lot of people don't seem to comment and I, I want to welcome. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know where am I looking into the camera of everybody right now? Yes. I'm saying welcome. Welcome. Uh, of course, uh, everybody doesn't have to like this idea and everybody right. doesn't have to come to this. Even right. if you're just breathing, you're kind of uh, you know, a participant by default, but there is no pressure. This is not a cult. This is not an imposition. Yeah. It's just a party for humanity. It's a big deal, glossy, show busy kind of event with a lot of bells and whistles, but with a very deep underpinning that I hope speaks to the, the soul. We like to say that um, we rock the planet while stirring the soul. Right. I hope. Yeah. And basically it's an invitation. It's a party invitation. You bet. But you my, bet. my perspective on this would be have a RSVP, have people where they can sign up and say, I want to be part of the party. Let me know where it is. I love that. Well, first of all, where the party is, is everywhere. The idea right. is that we will have seven main hubs, one on each continent, uh, venues, uh, you know, like the O2 arena, for example, in, European continent, etc. And then within each continent, there will be myriad uh, countries who decide to get on board and have their own events yes. as part of, so that there are live feeds and, uh, you know, live cams and mm. jumping from different corners of the world as this three-act structure, I might add. This is an actual event with contact. It's a perhaps two and a half hour event, much like I would say the Olympics, oh, mm -hmm. no, the Olympics closing ceremony is right. multiplied by everyone. Mm -hmm. So there is a storyline, there's a theme, fabulous music, fabulous style, culture, uh, and a whole new storyline about humanity woven into this. So 
uh, it's happening wherever a person is. And if you want to talk to your local governments or chambers yeah. of commerce, or tourist boards and encourage them to mobilize mini synchronistry uh, satellite offices to start getting this going, I think it would be terrific. Yeah. I remember the millennial, um, you know, everybody was waiting for the world to come to an end and my <laughs> whole family was out and I was at home with a good book. And then I decided to watch TV and I spent five and a half hours watching every country around the world come into its millennial. And it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful because you saw the celebration of each country in their own way. And then it was so beautifully done. And I'm just so sorry they never made kind of a DVD that you could buy of it because it's something I would love to have seen again. And it was that beautiful celebration of every country in the world coming together in this one millennial to, to greet this new, this new century. And it's, it's something that really stays with you forever. And I think that type of thing is, and also, have you seen that wonderful song? You're not on Facebook, so you probably haven't. But there is a, an Indian couple that's taken children from around the world, some of them disfigured or blind or memorable palsy or whatever, and they're all singing or playing music, and it's all one song. And it's, oh. it is so hard. I tried to reach out. They became too oh. popular, so they couldn't do an interview with me. But it just shows again black, white, pink, yellow, who cares what? It's about the heart and the soul, yes. sharing a song, uniting people from around the world. It is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. And it shows we can. That's a whole thing. We, we can. can. We just got to do it. And what I honestly, Sarah, I get shivers when I think what it would feel like for a global moment. Mm -hmm. If I am standing in my corner of the night sky knowing that at the same moment, you know, uh, 20 kilometers away from me in a, some big arena is the big deal event and little bars and hospitals yeah. and prisons and even homes are lit up with this going on. And that five, 10,000 kilometers away on another side of the world as the sun is rising, mm -hmm. the same thing is being yeah. broadcast from different cultures, yes. different time zones, different seasons. And we're all experiencing this moment together. Yeah. Wow. Well, as you said, we, we've seen it wow. done with the Olympics. We've seen it done with, you know, the whole millennial thing. We've seen it done with soccer. Why can't yeah. we not see it done, you know, in, in the, for us coming together for this planet Earth, you know, as it's residents. A it's a resident party. That's right. It's a resident <laughs> party for the people and the yes. planet. Yes. And can you imagine the Olympics? Uh, I, I had spoken with uh, some higher ups at the Olympics who loved synchronicity. Yes. Loved yeah. the idea, but said it was a little bit too big for the Olympics. Right. The, so, yeah. all right, you know, we take that with a grain of salt. But I think we've never done anything on uh, Richard Branson. Are yes. you hearing this? This is something you could do so easily. Elon Musk with Google, put the two of them together. They've got the tools. They've got the tools. Okay. Colonizing Mars. Exactly. No, 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 no. Let's unite people here first, right? Uh, and uh, they've got yeah. the tools. They've got the tools. Yeah. So yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, getting them on board. And the, and the thing is, if, if the people under your umbrella are yeah. not enough to open up those doors, for conversation, then I don't know what is, right? Here we go. Exactly. Let's, so it's time to knock on the door and say, come on. Yeah. Let's, let's do this together. Party. Yeah. Get let's this get party. this party going. <laughs> <laughs> Celebration of life. That's what it's all about, right? Yes. And yes. celebrating life, planet in gratitude with a positive attitude and with uh -huh. a sense of love for one another. As I said, we don't have to all agree with one another, but what we do have to uh, agree to is that I can't not, it's not about hating someone because they think differently. Right. 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 It's about celebrating those differences and understanding that if I listen to you from your perspective, I might learn something. I That's still right. may not agree, but I will understand. Right. 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 If we just start with that little scene, yeah. we don't have to conquer worlds. Just, no. just that. Yeah. 
thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. This yeah. is an exciting yeah. series and all the people that are coming on, I'm sure we're going to gather more along the way. So just yeah. next week, every week, we're going to be bringing you somebody else. Just uh, you will find it here on selfdiscoveryradio.com under Eco Solutions. You'll also see it under the event page. And it's just come in and listen to these people. They've dedicated their lives. They have wonderful solutions. They've got incredible insight. They'll help you go in. They'll help you come out. They'll help you just be a part of the party because this is what it is about. It is, again, what am I doing for the collective we? And we want you to be a party of the we. So come and join us. So thank you so much, my darling. Thank you to your listeners and your viewers and to you, dear Sarah. Don't forget to share this and share all of them that are coming up. Have a conversation with your family, with your friends, have a wine party, uh, listen to the conversation, and then ask yourselves, what can I do? Which part of the series has really ignited you that you really want to be, step up and be a part of? What can you start in your own community? What can you start in your own family base? This is an invitation, folks. We hope it's an inspiration that has invited you to step up into your I am so you can come and join us in the we are because that's what it takes is you. Until next time, folks. Bye for now. For more wonderful shows like this, please go to selfdiscoveryradio.com, podcast and see our lineup. And if you wish to support us, we have a funded button. Please stay tuned for our next show.